His sweetness, the premier running back in the National Football League, the all-time rusher, Walter Payton of the Chicago Bears. He's the first man over 1,000 yards this season. Payton, such a great runner, such a versatile back, an exciting player. And Walter Payton, of course, the running game of the Chicago Bears has been the number one offensive uh, team to move the ball on the ground in the NFL. Mike Ditka has looked at some film himself, and there is one player that he's concerned about. I asked him yesterday, I said, is there one guy you'd like to take out of that Raider lineup? No question, he said. Marcus Allen, number 32, leading touchdown scorer in the NFL. The defense of Hardenstein, McMichael, Hampton, and Dent, that front four. Three linebackers, Otis Wilson, Mike Singletary will hit you as hard as anyone, and Al Harris is big enough to play in the defensive line. Mike Richardson and Leslie Frazier at the corners, and Todd Bell and veteran Gary Fensick at safety. Into the wind. And a beauty. Fisher at his 31. 40. 50. And he's out of bounds at the Raider 48-yard line. Jeff Fisher. Ray Guy, number eight, the putter, who's a fine athlete, down to make that stop. Jim McMahon, like Wilson, a BYU graduate with Matt Suey and Walter Payton in the backfield. Willie Galt, the speedster from Tennessee. Dennis McKinnon, a great blocker for a wide receiver in the tight end. Emery Moorhead. The line has Jim Covert, the youngest captain in the NFL. Boards, Hilgenberg, Becker, and Van Horn. Marcus Allen trying to get outside. Seven yards at the 42 before Gary Fensick can bring him down. Second and short for Wilson. Good protection. Dumps it off to Allen. And Marcus Allen has the first first down of the game at the 48-yard line. Mike Singletary, Samurai, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle. Here's where the Bears bring almost eight men up on the line of scrimmage in that unique alignment. Third and ten. Cover. How do you do? Kenny King, the fullback, as those big linemen of the Bears trying to pick up that bounding pumpkin, and they just couldn't squeeze it. An eight-man front virtually for the Bear defense, and there's the blitz from the blind side right there. Woof, just Otis vicious. Wilson. Otis Wilson, number 55, and right behind Singletary, he's the man they single out as being their second most aggressive linebacker. Watch from the right-hand side of your screen. Number 55, no one even touched him. He just literally lifted Mark right off his feet, and I don't think it's a lower body injury, but there was looked like a whiplash almost. From the 24, the Bears in a scoreless first quarter. McMahon's first pass, and he's going long. Willie Gold, he has it at the 26-yard line. a 50-yard play for the Bears. And it's just been in the last little while that people have begun to accept the challenge. Willie Galt, world-class speed, challenges the speed of Lester Hayes and then makes a fine catch as Hayes is all over him. Finally gets him out of bounds to save the touchdown. for his sweetness, Bob Nelson, the tackler. Watch Peyton in action here. Behind the blocking of Suey, little misdirection to the right, and then back against the grain. Good blocking inside, and there's the official doing a little back dance and, and slap to the ground. Oops, Raiders were offside, and Peyton, he's on his way. zone is Peyton's place and he has his seventh touchdown this year this is a freebie no matter what happens they know they've got another chance but it's breaking tackles right there McElroy Davis running right out of the arms of two of the very most physical safeties in the NFL number 71 right in the middle of your screen Pakel Nelson the linebacker and there's a first miss tackle by McElroy, the second by Davis, as he runs away from the Raider defense. Outstanding. David Hum, last minute uh, 
chat with Tom Flores and Hum. Those are his career numbers, not this season. David Hum, who is now in his 10th season, has only thrown the football 130 times. Actually, 11, a yard loss. Hum, on the throw. Dumps it out to Marcus Allen. He has room. 45, 50, and into Bear territory and a first down at the 47. There again, you see the Bears basically with a seven-man front. Third and five. Good protection. Not now. I'm in trouble. Whoops. He hands it off to Davis. A free ball. And... A costly mistake by Hum. He nope. knows he made a mistake on that one. And Mike Hartenstein gladly accepts it for the Bears, who have a 7-0 lead and own the football, now at the Raider 49-yard line. Hartenstein from Penn State. <laughs> McMahon to Suey. And Suey, powerful legs driving to a first down at the 37. 11 yards on that play. Out of bounds at the 30, maybe the 29. They're going to call it inside the 29. Rod Martin ran him out. They usually control the time and the clock, too. Haven't done that today. Mark Wilson back in duty off to Marcus Allen. And Allen to the 25-yard line. Again, of about seven, Singletary made the tackle. And Wilson now has the win. Third and three. Oh, what a catch by Christensen, and he may have the first down at the 28-yard line. A one-handed snare by the tight end, Christensen. Wilson, look at that ball die, and it's been intercepted by Frazier. Leslie Frazier, he's at the 12-yard line. It looked like Wilson hit someone's helmet. He's holding his hand as he finished that throw. That ball dying and falling right into the grasp of Frazier. Let's see what we'll happens. We'll be able to see it from here. I think he hit someone's hand. There were hands up in front of him, but that ball just flipping out of the side and fluttering off to the side. Good, good reception. And second big turnover. Third down and seven. McKinnon in motion. Peyton got blockers. And he has a touchdown. Alder Peyton, you give him the football. He knows where that goal line is. Jimbo Covert, number 74, a great block out in front of Peyton, but it's that great acceleration as he gets to the outside. Walder doing a little celebrating as he gets into the end zone. I think he, I think he tripped over a photographer's foot, but being the acrobat that he is, he just made a little celebration roll out of it. The game of musical chairs continues. The greater quarterback, David Hum, is back in. First it was Wilson, a back injury, then a hand injury, apparently, and Hum starts in terrible position at his 11, and oh, he's now in a really bad spot. Todd Bell buries him at the 9. Listen to this crowd. slamming out to the 15 Mike Hartenstein and company with a tackle it'll be third and six they're after home Christensen is short of the first down at the 18 Todd Bell made the hit Peyton is a place to start picked up nearly seven and he has the first down at the 40. And the Bears are blowing the Raider lineman right off the line of scrimmage. Have the upper hand in the first half today. David Hum for the injured Mark Wilson. He's in trouble. Is that a fumble or a pass? If it's a fumble, the Bears appear to have it. Nope. The Raiders come up with it, and it was ruled a fumble. These are the guys that will give you the heat right here. Hampton and Dent. 
Now watch them as they rush the passer. Dent is going to go all the way around the outside, off your screen. Hampton right up the middle. Watch him there, coming from the backside, just stripping the ball away. No chance for the quarterback. Third down, 17. Um, good protection. And it's intercepted by Fensick. Gary Fensick, now number two in Bears history. That's his 28th career interception. That's the third turnover of the day for the Bear defense. David Hum with plenty of time on this particular pass to throw the football simply throws a bad pass. Overthrows Todd Christensen and Fensick takes advantage of the miscue. You notice how everything was shut off there. Now Hum from his own end zone throws to Allen who makes a fine catch at the 27 yard line and there's Wilson downfield to cover. So Wilson greets Allen in the backfield so Allen comes back and says hello after a first down catch. Second and ten. David Hum. Down he goes. Richard Dent with the sack. Four sacks for the Bears who run their NFL lead to 42. Even though Hampton is out of there, Jim Osborne has gone in. And look at, look at that coming all the way around. Dent is so quick. He's just absolutely running right around. Davis on the outside. Third and 18. Hum needs a lot and gets some of it to Doki Williams at the 31, but it'll be shy of a first down. And Hum gets hit again. Third down and a short five. And two minutes left in the half. McMahon. Good move by McMahon, who has a first down at the 37 yard line. And he leaves a string of Raider tacklers in his wake. He's using his voice effectively, and they've moved Howie around to try and get a pass rush there. But watch Pakel, 71. Woof. That was the Bears' timeout. 14-0. They're going for more. Out of the backfield to Walter Payton, and he steps out of bounds to stop the clock at the 44. He's shy of the first down. Payton's first yardage as a receiver this afternoon as he picks up seven on the play. And it has to be exciting to have a man like Peyton in your backfield with such versatility. Runs a nice pattern there. Breaks to the outside. Third and three. 126 left in the half. Up on top. Could be intercepted and will be McElroy. 25-30, 35-40, 45-50. And Van McElroy, that was the last man who could have gotten him. McElroy was that close to a touchdown. And let's see who saved it. Jim Covert. The tackle was able to cut him down just as he was ready to move into open field. You've got two new guys on the left side of that line, and they are just, they've got all they can handle to try and keep those black-shirted bears off the quarterback. Second and ten. Wilson. Down he goes. Another sack, and this time it goes to number 90, Al Harris. The fifth of the game for the Bears. Virtually on track with their 11-sack pace of last week. Mark Wilson trying to get outside. Marcus trying to control Harris, but Wilson ran right into him. Third down, 16. Frank Hawkins, 30, and tackled at the 27-yard line. This one, 45 yards. With the wind, he's got it. Leading 14 to 3. First play of the second half. And Walter Payton with the honors. And gaining six. Starting wide, seeing a little crack in the defense, and then using that tremendous acceleration. Look who's at quarterback, Steve darned. Fuller. So apparently McMahon, maybe when he was hit late in that first half, and there's McMahon. And we have no word yet, but boy, he you is see really pain. hurting. Well, bruised back is the report, and that would, we're just guessing now. That's where he was hit as he was uh, scrambling upfield by Pakel. And the Raiders with some new faces in that first unit. Kenny 
King breaking a tackle. Gets a block. 40, 50, and he's to the bear. 48-yard line of flag down. I believe we'll have a face mask. Mark Wilson, they said earlier he wouldn't return, but forced into action. Bad hand and all. Allen breaking tackles and fighting to the 35-yard line, where he's two yards short of a first down. Third and two. Allen has a first down and more to the 29. So the Raiders come out running and effectively. Harris and Singletary with a stop. 40-yard field goal try by Chris Barr. And with the wind, is it good? Yes, he just hooked it inside that upright. Suey in motion. And Peyton running in that direction. Boy, just see him get that speed into high gear. What we did not show you was the punishment that the quarterbacks have been taking in this game. McMahon left twice with injuries. His replacement, Hum, is left perhaps for the season with a knee injury. Check that uh, Mark Wilson left twice with injuries, and McMahon now is on. Peyton has a first down at the 30. Bill Pakel made the tackle. Oh, he is a defiant runner. Bears trying to do the same here in Chicago. They lead 14 to 6. It's second down and 8. Fuller's first pass in a couple of years. And it's complete to the tight end, Emery Moorhead. He does not have the first down. He's at the 37. Lester Hayes made the tackle. Tremendous heat applied to Fuller as Mike Davis had made the choice of rushing rather than covering. Usually the tight end is his man. Good enough on that last one. He's good enough to cross it back to Peyton. He's near the 100-yard mark as he rolls down at the 41. Peyton going for 100. He's got his 100 yards again as he stopped right at the yardsticks at the 47. Nelson again with the tackle. And another Raider slow getting up. 61st time that Peyton over the 100-yard mark. Seven times this year. Their last championship 21 years ago. And they did under George Allen win it on defense. First down and Fuller's second throw. A little dump off to Moorhead. And the tight end. That's his second catch on this drive and about nine yards. Hawkins and Allen behind Mark Wilson on second and six. Marcus Allen skipping to the outside and just shy of the first down. At the 29. Jeff Fisher back at the bare 20 as guy to kick. Uh oh, what a terrific fielding job by him. Look at that uh, kick. Woo. All the way to the 13. Fisher down at the 26. Although he's in there now, he's back in there. He's back in the defense. He's a very important cog. Peyton has the first down at the 39. Kenny made the defensive play. His talent and great example. Dalvin Thomas gets the call, and he's out to the 44-yard line. Thomas, former fighting Illini down the road, a free agent pick in 80. Big down. Thomas, first down to the Raider 49, and it was Peyton leading him through the hole. So great block by Peyton on the last one, but he really nailed it here. Let's look at how it will appear going full speed. We usually show you the, the results at half speed, but boy, he just ducked his shoulder and his head up in there and buried himself in the body of one of those white-shirted Raiders. Calvin Thomas has carried the ball four straight times. Second and seven. A little inside handoff to Thomas. He gets the number again, and he has a first down. The 37-yard line. So five calls in a row go to Calvin Thomas, who had gained only 68 yards all year. That's the value of a Walter Payton as a decoy. There's really long, long yardage for the Bears today. Third and about 20, and Fuller going to run it. 40. And he gets down just in time at the 35, short of the first down, and almost in field goal range. Williams left, Barnwell to the right. Again from the end 
zone. To Williams again, and he's got it. And a saving tackle by Fraser as Wilson now down deep in the end zone after a 31-yard pass and put a stick on the wrong man. You're right, 55. And they'll play it over again, and this is Todd Christensen pulling his way out across the 45-yard line, close to a first down. Gary Fensick made the tackle. Marcus Allen wants to throw, looking for Todd Christensen. He's got it at the 17-yard line, despite the fact that the Bear defender right there had his hand might even have deflected it. And Christensen had the uh, presence to watch that one into those big mitts of his. is coming. Otis Wilson right there. Wilson playing with a painful thumb injury, but throws that one well to Christensen, who is out of bounds at the 25. Fourth and seven. Or give up the ball. Look out. The Bears have it again. Stein, 73, led the charge. The eighth sack for the Bears today. They take over on downs, and they're celebrating in Chicago. Some frosting by Bob Thomas. This is an interesting choice by Ditka. And he hits it through. said has six and a half sacks the last three games and he's just been terrorizing Wilson all day Richard Dent 6'5 253 in his second year from Tennessee State an eighth round draft pick a year ago and he's playing like a number one pick in the entire draft nothing <laughs> too easy in the remaining six for the defending champions Wilson somehow ducks out of that problem and Fensick has another interception Gary Fensick to the 23-yard line. And that just adds some frosting to a brilliant defensive day for the Chicago Bears. Something great about celebrating a victory and having been through both the exciting win and the upset losses. Richard Dent with four and a half sacks. The star, he's had 11 sacks in the last four games. Walter Payton, brilliant as always, but it was really the defense. Hang a star on that defensive door. They were the ones who bring home the 17-6 victory for the first place Chicago Bears. Caution, the following feature has been rated X. It is not for the faint of heart. Parental discretion is advised. However, if you're the type of football fan who enjoys the physical variety, have we got a helmet-knocking, bone-jarring tilt for you. 
Soldier Field was indeed an appropriately named arena, as two tough armies engaged in hand-to-hand -hand last Sunday when the Raiders came to town to square off with the not-so-gracious host Chicago Bears. The feared silver and black locked in mortal combat with the monsters of the Midway. Allen will have his work cut out for him today as Mike Ditka's men are the toughest in the league to run against. And the guy who's doing a great job in stopping opposing runners is Mike Singletary, arguably the best inside linebacker in the game. Offensively, the Bears have been a bit inconsistent, but now that quarterback Jim McMahon is healed, Chicago has shown signs of an offensive resurgence. Of course, when the Bears need the critical first down, they call on wondrous Walter Payton, the NFL's all-time leading rusher. And you can bet that Walter will be pumped up for this one for sure. It's the Raiders and the Bears in a war on the NFL Game of the Week. On L.A.'s second possession, quarterback Mark Wilson found out that if the Bear defense looks tough on film, they're even more talented live. Number 21, Leslie Frazier intercepted, but fortunately for Wilson, the theft took place out of bounds. Then Chicago's fierce pass rushers decided to get a look at Mark up close and personal. Otis Wilson's sack temporarily sidelined his namesake, but an alert Kenny King pounced on the fumble for the Raiders. Another look shows that number 73, Mike Hartenstein, had an easy shot to recover, but simply couldn't find the handle. While Raider trainers attended to Wilson, Jim McMahon attended to the matter at hand. Speedster Willie Galt performed the virtually unthinkable by beating all pro Lester Hayes deep. And then the Raiders attempted the unthinkable. They tried to arm tackle a determined pack named Walter Payton. brushed aside Los Angeles and scored from 18 yards out. Chicago's 7 to nothing lead was a result of McMahon staggering the count, drawing the Raiders offsides, putting them out of position in bad shape to stop number 34. Tough physical opponents have always brought out the best in Peyton. The Raiders are such an opponent, and Walter, as usual, would rise to the occasion today. With Wilson temporarily indisposed and Jim Plunkett unable to perform, the unenviable task of facing the Bear defense fell into the hands of third stringer David Hum. Behind David, the Raiders' offense hummed, but only briefly. Hum found Marcus Allen a willing target, but when he tried to hand off to tackle Bruce Davis, number 79, Raider coach Tom Flory started praying for a quick return of starter Mark Wilson. Last week, Chicago recorded an astounding 11 sacks against Minnesota, and they would add another nine today. Some quick addition, and you come up with a remarkable 20 sacks in two games. Now that is a pro pass rush. Mike Hardenstein did recover this fumble, and quite predictably, the Bears did what they do best. 
they gave Peyton the ball. With less than a minute remaining in the quarter, Ditka gave up a sure three points and ran Peyton once more on fourth and one. The Raiders can play a little defense too, and Peyton was stopped cold. More good news for the visitors came when Mark Wilson returned to run their offense. A patented one-handed grab by Todd Christensen netted an important first down, and then Wilson decided to gamble on a pass a bit deeper. Leslie Frazier picked off the lame duck pass. Wilson had hit his hand on a lineman's helmet a couple of downs earlier. And clearly, his hand was not going to be as accurate as it was three weeks ago when he fired five TD passes against the Chargers. Moments later, Peyton gave his Bears a 14 to nothing lead. got the corner from eight yards out, and suddenly L.A. trailed by a pair of touchdowns. Walter's score fired up the defense, and especially number 95 Richard Dent, who set his sights on Hum, who once again had come in to spell Wilson. Hum was blasted once more, but two plays later he found a wide open man. Unfortunately, that person happened to be veteran safety, Gary Fencing. Chicago couldn't take advantage, but Richard Dent took advantage of another opportunity to hammer home. Bears were using Hum as a punching bag, but McMahon wasn't finding the afternoon to be a day at the beach either. This was clearly not a good day to be taking snaps from center. Such snaps generally resulted in sacks, or in this case, interceptions. Number 26, Van McElroy picked it off and gave the Raiders excellent field position. And for the second time, Mark Wilson appeared to see if he was up to the task. He needed help with his chin strap, and shortly thereafter, he needed help in getting up from the familiar Soldier Field turf. Wilson's biggest gain came on a 15-yard roughing the passer penalty, and Chris Barr finally got the Raiders on the board from 34 yards out. Despite being pushed all over the field, the silver and black trailed by only 11, 14 to 3. The battle was half over, but the war was far from over. Surprisingly, in 1984, the Raiders have been one of the easiest teams in the NFL to run against. And with run stuffer supreme Matt Millen injured, the Bears, and particularly Walter Payton, were finding cracks in which to pound out five, six, and seven yards a pop. This trend continued as the second half got underway. But on third and two, the Raiders made a stand. They stopped Matsui for no gain 
flexing the muscles that characterize Raider Mike. And when fullback Kenny King, number 33, began Los Angeles' first offensive series of the half with this 14-yard burst, the Raiders appeared to have awakened. Tough inside running by Marcus Allen followed as Los Angeles tried to beat the Bears at their own physical game of power and strength. But Chicago did not break, and the Raiders had to settle for a Chris Barr field goal of 40 yards. Midway through the third period, the Raiders had yet to score a touchdown, and they trailed Chicago 14-6. This was Walter Payton's kind of game, and number 34 wanted all Chicago fans to enjoy it as much as he was. Payton is a true warrior. He asks no quarter, he gives no quarter, and against the Raiders' physical style of play, Sweetness did what he does best, grinding out yard after yard, always more than he seems to be getting. Occasional pass by reserve quarterback Steve Puller replacing an injured Jim McMahon helped sustain an impressive Bears drive that began on their own 14-yard line. Two short completions to Emery Moorhead and six Payton runs had the ball in Raider territory. Again on a third and short, Los Angeles held, stopping Payton for a loss. But the Bears had taken nearly seven minutes off the clock and still led 14-6. The Raiders, with Mark Wilson less than 100%, stayed with their running game. And while it proved somewhat successful, it was apparent as the third quarter came to a close that Los Angeles had to throw in order to have any chance at all against the NFL's best defense. On the first play of period four, a Mark Wilson pass was batted down at the line of scrimmage. But that didn't stop Chicago's secondary from making its presence felt. The Bears were giving Los Angeles some of its own medicine, and the Raiders, normally the ones who dish out the punishment, were getting frustrated. The 14-6 score in the fourth quarter had the Raiders a little edgy. The monsters of the Midway were alive and well in Chicago. The 1984 version was the best in pro football, and it came as no surprise that they were shutting down even the Raiders. What was a surprise was the Bears' next offensive series. Little used running back Calvin Thomas, number 33, carried the ball on five consecutive plays, and the third year free agent powered out two Chicago first downs. Bears did not capitalize on Thomas's bullish running. The drive was stopped when Steve Fuller was sacked by the Raiders' defense. But again, just as in period three, Chicago had controlled the ball for a long time, this drive eating up over seven minutes. The fourth quarter was half over. The Raiders still needed two scores to win. This was not the best of days for Mark Wilson. He had actually been injured twice in the first half, but was forced to gut it out when his backup, David Hum, was also hurt. Now, with the ball on his own six-yard line and seven minutes remaining in the game, he was face-to-face -face with the NFL's finest defensive unit. Bears, with their intricate defensive combinations, had sacked Minnesota quarterbacks 11 times the week before and had made Wilson well aware of their furious pass rush. But Wilson responded courageously. Throwing from his own end zone, he hit Doki Williams for 31 yards and some breathing room. Three plays later, it appeared finally to come apart for Wilson and the Raiders.
Wilson's pass was picked off by Leslie Frazier, number 21. But the Bears were called for a personal foul, nullifying the interception. The Raiders were somehow hanging on, still with a chance to win. And when Marcus Allen, on the halfback pass, beautifully led Todd Christensen for 38 yards, the Raider mystique of come-from-behind victory surfaced in a hurry. But the next play proved most important. Wilson, with time, spotted Christensen alone at the goal line, but he just overthrew his tight end, and a seemingly easy touchdown was missed. The following play definitely and defiantly ended all Raider hopes. Defensive end Richard Dent, number 95, who would end the day with four and a half sacks, stripped Wilson of the ball and pounced on it himself as the Bears' defense made yet another big play. All season long, these new monsters of the midway had been frightening opposing offenses into sacks and turnovers. Many felt that would not continue against the Raiders, one of the most physically imposing teams in all of football. But these monsters were on the prowl. Men with less than familiar names like Otis Wilson, number 55, Al Harris, Steve McMichael, and Richard Dent. The Bears sacked Raider quarterbacks nine times, increasing their league-leading total to 47, almost five per game. They also intercepted three passes and recovered two fumbles in their second consecutive awesome defensive display. And when place kicker Bob Thomas drilled a 29-yard field goal with just over a minute remaining in the game, the Bears had their final points in a physically impressive 17-6 win over the defending Super Bowl champion Raiders. The victory was the Bears' third straight, and it marked the fifth time in ten games that the defense had not permitted the opposition to score in double figures. The Bears are now 7-3, with a commanding four-game lead in the NFC Central Division. With each passing week, their formula for success becomes more and more apparent. They rely on bone-crunching defense and the brilliant running of the NFL's all-time leading rusher, Walter Payton. It's a formula head coach Mike Ditka is more than happy with, for it has produced in 1984 what has been lacking recently in the Windy City, a winning football team capable of making its imposing presence felt every time it steps on the field. <laughs>